No, it is not. Uh, but, Rich, very good with the two rambles today. Well done. Your bye week did you well. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna see good tonight. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, but let's dive into a different topic we have yet to address on the Strictly Witness podcast. John Stanko with Mike Rich here. We're going to talk a little bit of golf. The Ryder Cup is coming up. A rather, I don't want to say unknown event, but it's well known by golf fans as one of the most unique events of the year, uh, USA versus Europe, and it's quickly approaching. Mike, when's this, do you know the start date off the top of your head for the Ryder Cup? Do I know? I'm sorry, what? Do you know the start date for the Ryder Cup off the top of your head? The start date, I believe it is the 26th of September, so it is coming up. 26th of September, and we're going to dabble a little bit into the Ryder Cup discussion, uh, preview it just a tad. And then we're going to end the podcast on our power rankings of the top five golfers in the Ryder Cup, uh, even though I'm pretty sure we'll agree on who's, number, who's the best golfer right now in that tournament. Um, but we'll end the podcast on that. So, Mike Ritz, how do you want to start this off? What are you looking forward to with the Ryder Cup coming up in a couple of weeks? Well, first of all, I really – I'm a big golf guy. I love, love the Ryder Cup. Uh, for those who don't know, it's every two years – so it's you gotta you gotta wait for it a little bit, um, and so it's not every year; it's every two years. So it's the biggest, it's the most honorable thing you can be you can be a part of in golf. Is the it is the Ryder Cup, and um, you know even people who aren't golf fans really should turn in turn on the Ryder Cup because it is competition at its best. It is two guys from the USA versus two guys from Europe, and I force them, and they just go against each other, and it's fantastic. Then they have singles matches. It is so good. But we'll start we'll, – we got to start with the team. I mean, um, you got – the USA Ryder Cup captain is Tom Watson, from one of the most respected golfers to ever walk the earth. And uh, let's face it, I'm going to say it right away, Tiger Woods wasn't going to be on this team. I don't care how healthy he was. I agree. Frankly, he wasn't doing anything. So, I, and the fact that the fact that he was so banged up that these guys in the Ryder Cup they, they go 36 holes a day. So Tiger Woods can't get through nine. So, yeah, especially if he goes bogey, bogey, bogey in the first three holes, then he just says, "Ooh, I'm hurt," and then he withdraws himself from the tournament. But that, but that's neither here or there. That might be, <laughs> that might be another versus ramble for a future date. But, um. We got to start with the automatic qualifiers. These are the guys who have, throughout the PGA um, season, have been most consistent. And for those of you who don't know, where you place in each PGA Tour event, you get a certain amount of points for the FedEx Cup, which is the big tournament at the end of the year, and you get Ryder Cup points as well. So whoever has the most points, the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The top nine guys get automatic bids into the Ryder Cup team. Then after that, you have the captain has their three captains picked. So they pick three people who didn't make the top nine to round out the 12-man roster. So Tom Watson, uh, Tom Watson squad, you got Ricky Fowler, who is one of the best, uh, one of the most consistent players all year, which me and you and Johnny have talked about. He's come in the top five in all four majors this year. Certainly not hurting in the money department, Johnny. No, 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 no. He's doing he okay. He's fun to watch, um, and I think his swing is as loud as close. He is a uh, – he's quite he's, – he's definitely a person to watch. But real quick, Ricky Fowler, Jim Furyk, uh, always there. Always – he's really, really been consistent all year. Zach Johnson, who I think underrated. Matt Kuchar, Phil Mickelson, the crowd favorite, my favorite. He makes – he makes it after having a great last two tournaments. Patrick Reed, no one's talking about, one of the most consistent players all year. Then the, the next up-and-comer, Jordan Spieth, only 21 years old, makes the Ryder Cup team, his first full year on the PGA Tour, makes the Ryder Cup squad. Jimmy Walker, who was right there for the FedEx Cup title, fell short, makes the Ryder Cup team, and Bubba Watson. Bubba Watson, that rounds out the nine automatic qualifiers. Tom Watson chooses... Keegan Bradley, who was fantastic in the 2012 Ryder Cup uh, U.S. team. Hunter Mahan, who was also pretty good. And Webb Simpson, who is one of the most um, underrated and consistent players on tour this year. So that was the USA Ryder Cup squad. Yes. 
Uh, now, the big question that I think everyone is kind of posing is that Billy Horschel, who won the FedEx Cup, is not on the U.S. Ryder Cup team. Now, I, I don't know the timeline for which Tom, Tom Watson had to make his selection for this team if there was a, uh, like a deadline, if you will. I don't know that date. But Billy Horschel, he won the last two events uh, and then won the FedEx title. And I, if, if I'm Tom Watson, I'm shaking my head going, why didn't I pick the hottest golfer that the USA has right now? Well, to be fair, the picks come before the FedEx Cup ends. So you have to make the decision. Uh, Billy Horschel wasn't the most consistent guy on tour this year. He was kind of nowhere to be found a lot. No one was really talking about Billy Horschel until the Masters of last year when he was leading after, after a round. But he's kind of been there in some tournaments. And then he just simply waited too long. This wasn't – it's a known It's a known fact that where the Ryder Cup deadline ends. And, yeah, it, it is unfortunate for Billy Horschel that he waited too long to kind of come into his own. I don't think he's hurting that much. He wins the last two tournaments. He wins the FedEx Cup, $10 million right there on top of the tournament that he won the week before. So I don't think he's really hurting in that sense. But – um well, yeah, it's unfortunate that probably the hottest golfer right now isn't on the team. But, you know, this is how it's done every two years. And the FedEx Cup is um, happens after um, the captain's picks get made. So it, it's kind of a it, – it's kind of – it's unfortunate for Billy Horschel, but that's just kind of how the way it goes. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, the big question for Team USA is that the fact of the matter is that they're, they're big underdogs. So, uh, no one expects them to win this. Europe has has the better players. And if you look down that Europe roster, I'll read through it quickly. you got Roy McIlroy, uh, won two majors this year. Right now he's the hottest golfer on the planet by far. Uh, you got Sergio Garcia, who had a great year. Henrik Stenson, Jamie Donaldson, uh, Victor Dubisson. Uh, I love saying that name, Dubisson. Uh, <laughs> Martin Keimer, Justin Rose, uh, Stephen Gallagher, uh, Graham McDowell. Uh, Thomas Bourne, Lee Westwood, and Ian Poulter. Uh, right now, I think you could easily say Team Europe has an absolutely huge advantage. Uh, and, according, and according to uh, GolfStrat.com, USA, I guess, and according to their matchups, only has two advantages out of the 12 players matched up. That's it. And uh, they haven't won on European soil since the 90s. I think that's also something they're playing. How the Ryder Cup is set up, you play every other every other Ryder Cup, you play on your soil. So last last Ryder Cup in 2012, they played in USA. Now they're playing on European soil, soil which is, is, is kind of important. I mean, Europe has dominated the USA in, the, in, these, in these Ryder Cup matchups, um, and they, they, even, they dominate even more when it's on their soil. But fun, but it is it is to be said. The last time we won on European soil, Tom Watson was our captain. So whether you take that or not, it's at least something to talk about. Tom, last time Tom Watson was our captain, we won on European soil. So let's see how it is here. But I agree, Europe has the players here. You have the the best player in the world, Rory McIlroy. You have Sergio, who really sets the plate during the Ryder Cup. And I think the player that you really have to talk about here. For Europe is Ian Poulter. This guy was born for the Ryder Cup. This guy has fire, and this guy has just his guts. He has everything. He's looking to beat you every time he plays, and it's even more seen during the Ryder Cup. This guy's Ryder Cup record is 12-3, and three, Stanko. Yeah, that's, that's pretty solid. Ooh. He has a solid track record in the Ryder Cup. Granted, that's why Keegan Bradley made the roster. He played great with Phil last year. But Ian Poulter is the guy that is going to be – I really think it's going to be the story. He has been the story for the Ryder Cup. He's going to be the story again. Um, and Europe, Europe sim- simply has, has better players. Um, for me, I really want to – I'm more interested to see how the younger guys and the people who are in for the first time are going to do, at least for the – at least for the U.S. team. Because let's face it, there is only – only Phil, Jim Furyk, and Zach Johnson have more than three appearances in the Ryder Cup on the U.S. team. Ricky yep. Fowler has 
Ricky Fowler has two. Keegan Bradley has two. Webb Simpson has two. Hunter Mann has three. Bubba Watson has three. Matt Kuchar has three. And then Reed, Speed, and Walker are all new players. So, um, you know, sometimes people say ignorance is bliss in the Ryder Cup. Your first, uh, your first go around, you sometimes play your best golf. And uh, I think people were surprised at how good Keegan Bradley did last year and uh, last time. But, you know, these guys in Europe, they really have the players to – Really take take care of us, and um, I would I would I'd be lying if I said I think USA is going to win here. I think it's just uh, again it's another dominant Europe team, and um, I I lo- I mean as much as I you know love the US guys, I love a lot of guys on Europe. I love Roy Rockamore, McIlroy. I love Sergio. You know uh, I love Brad McDowell. You know they have so there's so many guys, and and that, that's kind of what I like on tour. There's so many likable guys now on tour that are very good. Um, and also Tiger Woods nowhere near the Ryder Cup, which is also fantastic. <laughs> a personal investment for Mike Rich, no Tiger Woods. Um, I, I agree with you. I think another person you got to look out for is Lee Westwood. Nine appearances in, on the Ryder Cup, the most experienced of the year players, and he has a record of 18, 13, and 6, so a winning record. I think you got to look out for him as well. He was an easy captain pick uh, when you have that much experience and you performed that well. Uh, so that's, that's another advantage that Europe has. They bring a ton of experience with those captain's picks with Ian Poulter and Lee Westwood. And when you have that at your expense, you can afford to, to select the first-timer in, uh, in, Steven, in Steven Gallagher. So yeah, it, it's oh, going yeah. to be really tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I just – it's just such – it's just really great. Uh, it's just – even if you don't like golf, it's just really something to watch. It It, it really is because – um, there's nothing, there's nothing else like it. And, um, it's just, you know what, it's just, who's better, you know, and it's max play, you know, it's just, you know, who, who has what it takes, you know, in the long run, it tests, uh, it tests mentally, it tests physically, it's just so demanding and it's unlike anything what the golfers kind of have to go through. Um, they don't have to play this, they don't have to play this type of setting, this match play setting. Um, they only do that once a year. But now with the Ryder Cup, uh, it is it is a completely different animal, especially when you are representing your own uh, representing your country. So uh, let's see let, let's see what happens here. Yeah, and you know what I love the crowds. The crowds at the, the Ryder crowd Cup is are fantastic, awesome, and that's why you got to look out for these for these for these young guys. And it, and it's kind of good. You see the kid like attitudes in these older guys like Phil and like. Uric, and because um, the crowd is just so into it, and guys like Ian Coulter, guys like Keegan Bradley, they feed off of the crowd's energy, and it's really just a sight to see. So I cannot wait for the Ryder Cup in a couple weeks. Yeah, you know those crowds in Happy Gilmore when the when the golf uh, upper class wasn't too happy. That's the crowds that you have at the Ryder Cup, and that makes it incredibly entertaining to watch. It's um, just the crowd crowd is ready to erupt. Every time, every time they're on the course, it is uh, it's, it's fantastic to watch. Yeah, like I'm I'm looking at a GIF right now of last year, Keegan Cat, uh, Keegan Bradley caddy waving around the flag stick after he made a huge putt, and the crowd going nuts in the background, and Keegan Bradley fuck, uh, fist pumping all over the place. So like, <laughs> you you would never get that on a on a regular golf course, a caddy waving around a flag stick in triumphant victory. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't. I, I can't wait. Um, I'm gonna be glued to the TV once it once it starts. Uh, but I would love. Uh, I would love if this was on U.S. soil. But they took care of us last uh, last time as well. So uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we can. Uh, if if we can steal one, steal one in Europe. But uh, Captain Paul McGinley for uh, Europe really has. Uh, really has uh, a nice a nice squad this year. So. 